It's been a week in Texas politics dominated by the governor's race. Let's get right to it and talk to our uh, analyst, Scott Braddock, Quorum Report. What's your headline for the week? Well, suddenly we do have a governor's race and a party switch in Texas. Mark Wiggins, political consultant. What's your headline for the week? Beto enters the arena. Brian Smith, St. Edwards University. What's your headline for the week? Beto runs 2022 is now about guns. And Patrick Svitek with the Texas Tribune. May I ask what your headline is for the week? Yeah, I hate to be redundant, but it's got to be the governor's race and Beto work launching his campaign. And let's get right into that. Uh, Patrick, you had a chance to talk with a candidate. It seemed like that he's trying to do a little backtracking from his previous campaigns. What's the sense that you got from those conversations? I think there's a, a degree of, of reinvention, but one of the things that was interesting, I think, coming right out of the gate was how uh, you know, narrowly focused his platform was around, uh, you know, a couple of key contrasts with Governor Abbott. It, it seems like a much uh, maybe tighter pitch that we, than we saw from him in the 2018 uh, Senate race. Right. When we look at Abbott, Abbott loves having a work as a challenger because that way he can really showcase his conservative credentials. By having somebody who's more moderate, Abbott would have some trouble. But it was interesting to talk to uh, Democratic professionals across the state, people in politics who said, you know, wasn't anything really new about Beto. It's, it, there's no real reinvention here or anything like that. It's sort of like he's a known quantity. And the real difference in the race is who he's up against. It's also a very different political environment. You know, Beto had a Democratic tailwind in 2018 and the 2022 midterms are shaping up to be perhaps the opposite of that. Brian, the land commissioner's race has been kind of below the radar, but all of a sudden a new player has emerged as running for it. That is Jay Clayburg, who is a member of the King family that owns the King family ranch. Does that change the dynamics for the land commissioner race now? Yeah, the more candidates that enter a race, the more likely you are to go to a runoff. And by having a bigger field, it means that people are going to start paying attention to it because there's going to be a lot of money thrown around. And it's a very important position here in the state of Texas and something more unique to Texas than any other state. Yeah, he's campaigning very heavily on climate change. And whether you think that that's, um, you know, a political winner in Texas, I think it is interesting to see uh, at least we have now at least two Democratic statewide candidates who are running. Um, I don't want to call them single issue campaigns because that sounds dismissive, but who are running campaigns focused on very narrowly on, on one issue. We had some people who left uh, politics saying they're not going to run again. Some that are going to be running again, like uh, Whitmire in the Senate, and then another who flip-flopped, State Representative Ryan Gillian. Scott, how big are these moves? Well, it's interesting that you have Democrats, uh, you know, kicking off their statewide campaigns, uh, you know, a lot of fanfare. But uh, what Republicans are doing in the meantime is the work of actually expanding their power. You have uh, Ryan Guillen from South Texas, who you mentioned, who flipped from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party, uh, said that the values of the Democratic Party no longer line up with the people in his district. And at the very uh, same time, the very next day, uh, a Republican who won a special election, John Lujan, in uh, Bear County, was sworn in as a new state representative. So Democrats talking a big game, and that's what they should do when they're kicking off their campaigns. But Republicans are actually expanding their power at the Capitol as we speak. One of the things when parties realize times are going to be bad, sometimes it's better to get out of office than lose office. And that's the first sign of a big tsunami for the Republicans. The split screen that we saw this week with the fanfare around uh, Beto Works campaign launch and Ryan Ginn switching parties, uh, that's a split screen that I think the Republicans in Texas uh, heartily welcome. <laughs> Could have worked out better for them, I think, in some ways. You know, on Coleman and Whitmire, these are two members with a, a huge amount of institutional knowledge of the legislature. You know, Whitmire's been in the legislature since the mid-70s. Uh, and Chairman Coleman, his loss is, uh, is going to be a huge loss of institutional knowledge. And, and uh, one of the really important things that uh, you know, Chairman Coleman has done over the years is to guide the legislative study group, which provides policy analysis for members of the House. All right, let's wrap up this week with one word. We'll start with Mark, your word for the week. Beto, 3.0. Brian, your word. Retirements. Patrick. Governor, or if I get two words, hell and yes, because we're going to be hearing that a lot. And Scott, your final word for the week. Party switch. And with that, we're wrapping up another week in Texas politics.